Welcome to Northwoods Kindred. I'm your go, the Bodvar, and on this channel we discuss all things Asatru Kindred related. In this video, I am building this beautiful drinking horn for a couple in Montana for an animist wedding or hand fasting. And we're gonna make, we're gonna carve it, we're gonna polish it up and wax it and get it ready to go so that they can consume a little bit of mead when they swear the oaths to each other. Stick around. Now I've made dozens and dozens and dozens of horns. Fantastic horns, big horns, little horns. Uh, and every time I make them, the process changes just a little. So when you get into making a horn, don't limit yourself by whether or not you have the tools that I have, because you can always do just as fancy a work with nothing more than a pocket knife and a little piece of sandpaper. That I promise you. So the first thing I have to do is, I've got the basic layout just kind of penciled in here with a uh, grease pencil, uh, basically a fancy crayon. Uh, and it's very rough and very uneven, but I just needed to get the spacing things right. The first thing I'm going to do is just grind in these bands. I'm going to get those lines laid in there and spaced out perfectly so that I can start the layout for the beads. And then the rest of this I'll come later. I got those lines cut in really rough, aggressive, a really nasty bit. Now I've gone to something a little less aggressive and I can go through and start cleaning it up and digging those lines in pretty deep. That's why I use black rit dye. Um, if I have a white horn or a really light colored horn, I can use other rit dyes, like blue or a green or a red, which really looks kind of cool when it soaks in. But on a black horn, I just add a little black dye to just kind of make it that much more rich before I do the polishing and various different stages through it. It says it's for cotton, wool, nylon, plus more. This would be the plus more. So now that it's all carved and sanded and everything's pretty much where I like it, I'm gonna clean it up really good. I'm gonna use a little bit of oil. This is 226, you can use WD-40 or mineral oil, whatever you have. Put a little bit on and just try and scrub out any of the polishing compound that gets kind of worked down into there. Because the next step is we're gonna cover this in boiled linseed oil and let it sit overnight so we get a nice, clean, hard, protective layer on the outside of the horn. But I gotta get it clean first. Now the last thing I have to do is trim that rim. They're generally pretty gross up at the top. I save it till last. But I'm gonna trim that off and then I'm gonna grind it a little bit to give it a little shape. I don't like a flat rim kind of like when it's got a little bit of natural lines to it. So I'm gonna lop that off first.
Now that that's done, you can see it's got a slightly irregular shape, very, very natural shape. I find that to be visually way more pleasing than having a nice flat top, so it looks like you bought it at Walmart. So what I have to do next is really clean that inside of it out really good. I'll do that with hot soapy water and a little bottle brush. Clean that inside out really good and then I can wax it. The last step in making a horn is waxing it. Now I prefer beeswax over a food safe epoxy, but you can do whatever you prefer. I've even got one horn that's got a food safe epoxy and then I beeswaxed over it because mostly what we drink out of these is, is beers and meads and they just taste better out of beeswax. And I'm just gonna fill the horn. And then I'm gonna slowly pour it out in kind of a turn to make sure I get all the way around the whole thing. About two shots like that will give a nice coating on the inside that'll last years of regular use as long as you're not using it with hot beverages. And there we go. And you can see a little bit on the top where it didn't quite wax, but that's okay. Because what we're gonna do finally is we're gonna, we're basically gonna cap the rim. And that keeps it from chipping out on the inside. Little dip on the rim, I'll let it let it cool. Now the reason we want to make sure that this stuff is fully melted first is because if there's any chunks floating in there and they end up getting stuck in the bottom of the horn, they could dislodge sometime when you're drinking the horn and then you end up swallowing or choking on a big chunk of wax. So you really want to have the whole pot liquid before you ever start the waxing process. And there we go, we have a nice fully waxed, fully complete horn. Uh, with a wax rim. 100% beeswax. This isn't um, paraffin wax or any other weird stuff. It's just 100% beeswax. The closer it is to coming out of the beehive, the better. Every time you make it liquid, see these get stuff, dirt and stuff stuck in them sometimes, but every time you wax and wax back and forth, uh, all the solids go to the bottom. Um, there's nothing ever floats on the beeswax. All that junk goes to the bottom of the beeswax. So eventually you can just pour this into a clean container, scrape all the garbage out of the bottom, uh, and all the dirt or anything is always it's never going back into your nice clean new horns. Hope you enjoyed that project and may you be feasting and drinking in the halls of your ancestors before the Christian God even knows you're dead. Hail the folk!